G'day YouTube, one MJ here and welcome back. All right, market cap is up 2.5%. Things are looking nice, there's green all across the board. Have we found the bottom and is this now off to the races? I'm not sold yet and I'm gonna get into why, but let's have a look at how the entire market's doing first. So Bitcoin dominance dropped ever so slightly, still just under 39%. It really does hover around 39, 40%. Sometimes a little bit more, sometimes a little bit lesser, but we've been there for a while. Not a lot of volume at the moment, which is something that concerns me. BTC price, $42,500 and gas prices, you know, up around sort of $10. So again, people jumping in and out of stable coins. Now this looks great here, but again, I've been saying this for a while, ladies and gentlemen. We see this, there'll be a day and everything looks green and everyone's like, it's over, the bottom's in. And then we go red for a day or two and it goes down a little bit lower. And then we see green and it comes back up and people get overexcited. And then we see red for a day or two after that and we set in a new low. That's what I'm concerned about at the moment, ladies and gentlemen. You already know if you've been watching my channel, I'm not buying too much at the moment. I am buying a little bit, uh, mainly focusing on Bitcoin, but only a little bit of Bitcoin, a little bit of Ethereum, excuse me, burp there. And I bought some Polygon the other day because it was at a pretty good discount. And I just like Polygon. But I'm really just holding cash more at the moment than anything else. Let's get into the markets though. What's done well in the last 24 hours in the top 100, considering the market's up 2.5%. Rose nearly 20%, Phantom nearly 15%, Jewel 13.5%, Safe Moon 13%, 12% for Kasama, Mina Protocol 10%. Look, Gala even made a move. That's nice. Polygon, I mean, up 8%. It was a little bit more. It's come down a little bit. So these are all really nice. But as I said, we've seen this before. This is a pattern that's repeating at the moment. And until the pattern breaks, just be very, very careful. I'm never going to offer you financial advice, ladies and gentlemen, because I am not a financial advisor or an investment advisor. In no way, shape, or form should anything I say be taken as that. You need to make your own mind up. I'm just someone who's giving their opinions of what they think. It's nothing other than that, just an opinion. All right, what hasn't fared well though? Considering the market's up, has there been any really big losses? Not really. Couple of losses here, and then we get into real small kind of, you know, single digit losses. Uh, mainly the market is looking not too bad. You know, not even one double digit loss, but even Chainlink's having a bit of a retracement, considering it pumped pretty good for around about a week. So if you're number one, like Chainlink, and you wanna buy at a discount, well, it's at a discount considering it was at nearly $50, but it made a bit of a move from, I think it got down to $17, $18, maybe even a little bit cheaper and you thought you'd missed it, well, maybe this is your chance to get in. But again, just be careful. And now I'm going to go on to why I'm not sold that it's, you know, that we haven't found the bottom just yet. All right, here's the Bitcoin chart. We're still in this falling wedge, ladies and gentlemen. I want to see what happens when we get up to this line. Will we be rejected from it or even not even get to it and then simply roll down and come down lower again? Now again, these falling wedges are bullish when eventually they break, most of the time in a bull market. Not so much if we're actually in a bear market. Now again, I've said this before, I'll say it again. I don't think we're in a bear market, but I've been wrong before and I'll be wrong again, ladies and gentlemen. If we are, this could continue to break down to here. And as I showed the other day with the CME gaps and things, we could just go so much lower. So I'm really waiting for Bitcoin to break above basically 44,000. And really what I'd be looking for is we have a breakout, probably roll down a little bit lower, retest this line, and then start to make our way, about, way up. That would be bullish. Until I see something like that, I'm just, I'm proceeding with caution. Now there's a lot of fear in the market. We were down at 10 the other day, but we jumped up pretty quickly to 20 something. So that says to me that the market is still really flip-flopping and there's a lot of, uh, random sentiment at the moment. We really need to, yeah, again, I'm never going to offer you financial advice. I'm just telling you what I'm doing. I'm holding cash at the moment. I am holding cash until I see a change. And then if I see a change, I'll deploy a little bit more cash. But uh, again, I won't go over the cash part too more. I had to 
rebalance and I want to make sure that I have a minimum amount of cash at all times. So I'm going to try and keep that. So this is, it looks good, but where have we seen this before? Pump up and roll over maybe. Pump up and roll over. 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 This is just a pattern that has been playing out and it continues to go down. So I am not getting too crazy just yet. I, I still think we're probably going to come down closer to here before we start to go up. If I'm wrong, I will be more than happy to be wrong. I would love nothing more than for that to be the bottom, basically sort of 39,000, and we're off to the races from here. I'm just not sold on that just yet. And here's another reason why. As I showed this the other day, this is, well, sorry, get rid of that. This is what I'm looking at. This is the total market cap. And we've been ranging around in here for a while. We've had breakouts to the low side, breakouts to the upside. Now this what I've drawn here is what I think would be bullish. We break out, come back down, retest this line, and then take off. That would be a bullish move. But at the moment, this is looking like it's wanting to roll over. It's still very early, so we've got plenty more to go. But I just get the feeling, as I've said before, I think we're coming down to around this $1.75 trillion mark before we find a bounce. Now, it doesn't mean we're coming down to exactly here. Maybe it's just around about here, $1.779 trillion or something. But again, I definitely think it's possible that we're probably going to come down to about the $1.34-ish trillion dollar mark. Again, that's roughly where the CME gap is. But it's way down here. And these two charts, what you've got to remember, is they're very, very similar because Bitcoin basically is the majority of the market, but it's not all the market. But if Bitcoin goes down to 33-ish thousand dollars, I think that'll be down around about sort of here somewhere, then the entire market cap is likely to come down around about there. So that's what I'm waiting. We're still in this channel at the moment. Look, we could bounce around in this channel for a lot longer and that'd be all right. But I'm just waiting to see if we're going to break to the downside or the upside couple of stories all right billionaire jeff gundelach expects recession this year i think a lot of people think it's going to come at some stage it might already be here something to keep in mind and advises against buying bitcoin at these prices he's not advising against buying it in general just at these prices because he said at present moment i would advise against bitcoin maybe you should buy at twenty five thousand. look if bitcoin gets down to twenty five thousand, uh, i'm buying I mean, I'm already buying, like I said, but I'll be buying more at 25000 But again, I don't think 25000 would be the golden mark, and I'd be surprised if it gets down there. Unless we are in a bear market and this is a recession, I think we'd probably go a lot lower than 25000 unfortunately, and the Bitcoin charts get broken. But that's only if that plays out. If that doesn't play out, then I think we go higher, and I would be surprised if Bitcoin goes below sort of 22,000. I think that last CME gap before the old all-time high is around 21, 22,000. I wouldn't be surprised if that gets uh, covered at some stage. But again, we'll just have to wait and see. Things are different. And we've never seen how Bitcoin will uh, handle a recession. It was built on what happened in the 2008, 2009 recession, but it's never been through a recession. So we don't know if it's recession proof just yet. All right, a bit of news on the Fed. So the Fed has come out and said that a US CBDC and stable coins could, could coexist. They will coexist, ladies and gentlemen. There's stable coins out there that you can't get rid of. One I can think uh, in particular is DAI. That's not going anywhere. You can't get rid of it. It's decentralized. There's no turning DAI off. So a US CBDC will have to cooperate with stable coins. And there's a number of other stable coins out there that will probably stand the test of time as well. And I don't think the US is going to come out and get rid of them. So it's very, very interesting. And this feels like maybe the Fed is starting to ease its stance on cryptocurrencies just a little bit until we go on. So, sorry. Fed chair defends blocking Wyoming crypto banks, including Kraken. So Kraken and Avanti, they were given uh, SPDIs, I think they're called. Uh, basically... A special kind of banking charter license but they are having trouble with the Fed uh, in actually getting their applications completed so federal federal chair Powell has come out and said there are good arguments to include the Wyoming banks they're called Wyoming banks because Wyoming was the place that gave them the, the licenses but Powell also defended the Fed's decision not 
to process Kraken's application. And one of the reasons he cited was their novel and hugely precedential nature. So they're unprecedented at the moment. And, uh, you know, my personal take is this is the old traditional finance slowing the new banks coming through because the old banks are going to become Kraken. Now, not Kraken exactly, but they're going to have their own exchanges. They're going to do cryptocurrencies. They just don't have it ready yet. And they're all going to get on that. Trust me, they will have to or they will not survive. And this is the old system slowing everything down so they can get in front. So this is what Kraken is. It's a special purpose depository institution. It's, again, it's got a special banking license. And it's a new type of financial entity that can transact in crypto while also performing traditional bank services. This is how all banks are going to be in the not too distant future. I'm not saying tomorrow, I'm not saying next week, but I think the next five to 10 years. And Kraken will be leading the way because none of the old banks are ready to do this at the moment. And so this is the old system holding up the new ones who are ready to go so the old system can get on the front foot and they can be the first to get out. So it's all good that, uh, you know, Avanti, that was the other one down here, and Kraken, they've got the licenses, but they're being held up. Now, they require, so this is Avanti and Kraken, they require so-called master accounts at the Federal Reserve, which banks use to arrange payments with the central bank and conduct settlements with other financial institutions. Now, the Federal Reserve has refused to process their applications for master accounts, a decision that Senator Cynthia Loomis uh, claims is both unfair and illegal. So sent the Senator Cynthia Loomis, or Lummis, I'm not sure how to say her name, so I apologise. You know, she's really been an evangelist for cryptocurrency. She's come out, she's on the front foot. You know, she's very pro-crypto, which is really, really nice. But, you know, it takes a lot to slow down the system, i.e. old finance, uh, and change their ways. And they don't want to lose. So again, it is just my point of view that they're holding this up so all their old buddies in the old traditional finance system can get all their ducks in a row. And they come out and offer it first, and then don't get me wrong, Kraken and Avanti will be given a chance later if they don't just simply give up. So Loomis has said, I'm terribly concerned about the manner in which Wyoming's SPDIs are being treated by the Federal Reserve. Now Loomis has also cited precedent to claim that the Fed does not have discretion to deny the master accounts to SPDIs and accused it of a strategy of deny by delay and starving the applicants until they die. That is something that's definitely going on. But again, I think other big banks, they will you know, they're already buying up crypto exchanges, small little kind of, not obscure ones, but smaller ones. And then they're going to offer that as this one big system. And then once they're all set up, the old, you know, Morgan Stanley's and all the rest of it, once they're all good and up and going, then don't get me wrong, Kraken will probably get uh, its license and Avanti will, but they won't be just handing them out too quickly. And here's a reason. Powell came out and said, if we start granting these, there will be a couple of hundred of them soon. Uh, he told the hearing, and they're hugely precedent, uh, precedential, which is why I'm taking my time on this. Because if he gives them a license, it sets a precedent, and then everyone else can come and do it. And he, again, he's you know he's entrenched in the old financial system. He's going to make sure they get ahead of all this, and they get all their products out and they're rolling before he will ever let Kraken and Avanti kind of you know get ahead. That's just my personal opinion. I don't have facts to back this up. That's just what I believe. Now, Senator uh, Mike Crapo or Crapo, sorry, I don't know how to pronounce his name. I hope I haven't offended him, and maybe that's just a typo. Has pressed the chair to say when will the Federal Reserve release an overdue report about its policy on stable coins and cryptocurrencies? This is what. You know, everyone in the States is kind of waiting for, and the world, because the state, you know, United States is the kind of world financial hub, really. They are big enough that they can drag their feet, and that's why they've been able to do this. Other countries are already getting on the front foot, and they don't want to be left behind. So they're already coming out with theirs, and the U.S. is doing the same. We're just going to have to now wait and see, because they said it should be out. It's completed, they're, you know. He replied that it's been completed and would be published in the coming weeks. So we're probably not too far off getting an indication of where the state's going to be and what the rules are going to be. Now, the rules that apply in the states don't necessarily mean that's going to be the rules worldwide, but a lot of other smaller nations and things like that will basically just mirror uh, their kind of uh, 
policies and things like that. But not all. I know Australia's got a report coming out as well. Now, whether they've been in talks with people over in the States and things, I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. But in the coming weeks, we should have an idea. I think we're all waiting for that moment to finally have an idea. This will not be a complete report that gives all the rules and regulations. It will constantly be adapted over years because this is a very progressive kind of place and industry. But at least we'll have an idea of where they're going. All right. NASDAQ company, a real estate company, is set to embrace Bitcoin, Ethereum, Doge, Shiba Inu and more. So this just goes to show you that cryptocurrencies are happening, they are real, they are legit. Now are all cryptocurrencies legit? Absolutely not. They're scam ones. And look, a couple of these ones name might not be here. I don't know if Dogecoin will be here in 10 years. I don't know if Ethereum or Shiba Inu. I think Ethereum is probably the more likely of them. I think Bitcoin, it's almost guaranteed as much as you know you can really offer guarantees. Nothing is 100%. But anyone who's trying to tell you cryptocurrencies and dodgy, it's going to be outlawed and this and that, no, it won't be. They will come out with regulation that they're already talking about that may see a lot of these cryptocurrencies deemed securities and they will have to register as securities and all sorts of things like that. But a lot of the good ones that are sufficiently decentralized, they're legit, they're real, and you cannot get rid of them. Like I said about the stable coins, there are certain projects out there that governments simply will not be able to do anything about. They are there, they are real, they are happening, and they're just too decentralized. You can't turn them off short of turning the entire internet off, and that's just not happening. All right, last but not least, zero knowledge scaling tech Plonky goes live on Polygon. Now, this is why I'm buying Polygon, not specifically this, because I like Polygon, they continue to innovate. And it was at nearly $3 and I picked it up for like $2.10, $2.15. So I was like, I'm going to put a couple of dollars into it. Even if it continues to go lower, which I think there's definitely a possibility, I don't mind buying good projects at discounts, but I'm just not going too crazy. Now, one of the reasons you need to remember Polygon, it's had so much going on and you really think its price should have gone a lot higher. There's reasons. Now this is happening after Polygon allocated $1 billion to the advancement of zero knowledge technology. Now Plonky is a zero, uh, a zero knowledge scaling technology that is claimed to be the fastest in the world. So this is what I like about Polygon. They're constantly, if they're not innovating, i.e. building it themselves, they're going out and they've bought up a lot of other companies. Now this is where the price is being suppressed because Polygon are spending a lot of their coin. They're selling a lot of their coins, sort of, in a sense, but for the right reasons. They're not just buying yachts and mansions, although I'm sure they will do uh, some of that as well. They are constantly building the project. So they bought Hermes Network for $250 million. They've put $250 million into a number of other projects. Uh, the startup Mia, and then they've got stuff that's going on with... Uh, decentralized finance they've got things that's going on with uh, gaming and metaverse and things like that they have been selling a lot of their tokens and when they give 250 million dollars worth of tokens to Hermes network what do you think they do with it they're not going to just hold it all immediately they're going to sell quite a number of them so there has been actually a lot of price suppression with Matic and eventually that will start to slow down. And then I think we're still probably a couple of years away from seeing the real price sort of explosion. When again, the majority of coins aren't, you know, being dumped all the time. They're sort of being held. But in saying that, that's not that I think Matic can't rise, uh, you know, a number of X's uh, in this run if it's still to continue. But you do need to remember that they, the Polygon network themselves are spending a lot of coins but they don't have infinite supplier coins. There's only X amount of coins and eventually that will start to slow down. And even all of these uh, firms that have got the coins will start to slow down. They're not going to sell them all, I wouldn't imagine. They'll probably sell a lot, you know, half, and then the other half they'll probably stake and hold on to for future revenue because they got 250 million coins today and let's say they got them at $2.05. That's great. Sell half of them, you know, you got millions of dollars right there hold on to the other half for another 10 years and maybe they go to 5, 10, 15, 20 dollars, then imagine how much money you got. So they're not simply going to just dump the, well, 
Some might, but I would imagine most probably won't. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's it from me. Look, a lot going on at the moment. And again, I'm just, I'm not sold that we're out of it yet. I hope that we are. So for me, again, it's mainly, I'm just holding on to cash at the moment, waiting to see what happens before I make any kind of major moves. I mean, you know, I'm lucky in the sense that I've been buying for, you know, quite some time now. And I've got my bags packed that if I didn't buy any more crypto from here on in and the bull run did continue, different story if it didn't, I'd do all right. You know, I'd have enough to uh, sell plenty and, you know, do quite fine. You know, not enough to retire, unfortunately. I don't have that kind of amount of crypto, but I would be all right. If we go into a bear market, and i.e. we are in a bear market, well, then I guess i just got to continue to try and find good buying places because eventually... We will be at a bottom, but if we're in a recession, we could be down for a number of years. That's something you need to keep in mind. All right, stay safe. Be kind to one another. It's good to be on that gain train at the moment. I just don't know if it's going to last, and I'll see you next time.